Welcome back. We are live here at CES 2018 happening in Las Vegas. This is really fun and Digital Trends have has you covered. I'm really excited to talk about this particular thing coming up next in our interview because I believe a buzzword here at CES that we've been hearing over and over again is Qualcomm and Snapdragon. To help us out with this actually, sticking on by, sitting at the table is Editor-in-Chief of Digital Trends, Jeremy Kaplan. Hey Jeremy. A pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for having me on the set. Absolute pleasure. You're in charge, not me. This is the, the, the hub, the station right here, and I'm nailing it, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but we are going to talk about Qualcomm here, especially Snapdragon, and to do that, we've got the Senior Marketing Manager, PJ Jacobowitz. Hey, PJ. Hey, thank you. No one gets my last name right the first time. That was incredible. I get it right 60% of the time, every, every time. time. Oh, All right, awesome. let's talk about some of the stuff that you've brought along here today. Awesome, thank you. So, and thank you for having me on. So uh, here at Qualcomm, we make what's called the Snapdragon processor. It's, uh, it's our mobile platform. And inside of it is basically a mini computer. It's got everything you need to basically build a computer. It's got a CPU for uh, general processing, a GPU for graphics, DSP for audio and AI. It's got an ISP for the camera. Everything is on here. It runs really low power. Um, so you can go, uh, your devices go all day long and they're just fast. How, how? That thing is the size of your thumbnail. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like unbelievable. So this tiny little guy is what's in tons of premium, uh, premium smartphones. Like my Google Pixel here uh, gets amazing battery life, lasts all day, takes awesome photos. And um, I mean, this is, your, this is your guy that's with you all day and it gets great battery life and uh, performance thanks to Snapdragon. But here at CES, our partners are launching tons of other devices that have Snapdragon in it. So, for instance, we have this awesome device here from Lenovo. This is called the Mirage One. It's their new virtual reality headset. Because it's using Snapdragon, the entire computer is inside of here. So whereas other virtual reality headsets, you have to have a wire out of the back tethered to a massive desktop computer on the side. Inside here is the computer. It's completely lightweight. It's completely fanless. It runs cool. Um, and it gets about six to eight hours of battery life. And, uh, it also gives you, because it has um, accelerometers and, all, uh, and camera features that uh, Snapdragon supports, you don't just get your head movement, which we call three degrees of free freedom, you get your whole body movement. We call this six degrees of freedom. So you can actually take steps forward and te steps backwards, you can duck, and you can move on angles. So earlier today, I was playing this skiing game in this virtual reality headset where I was moving my whole body in it. So, and That's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty wild. You don't have to put any sensors on the sides of your room or anything like that. All you have to do is have fun and put this on your head. And in open space, you don't break anything. I love the design of that as well. It looks like, e is it Eevee from uh, Wally? Oh, That's a really sleek, futuristic design. And you're doing futuristic things with it as well. Totally, totally. And you know what you could do, actually, um, Google makes uh, what they call the, uh, the street view camera for your phone, and you can capture 360 videos, and then you can view them back in your headset in VR, and it's very immersive, very immersive. So I'm, usually, really cool. I'm usually fairly skeptical about VR, yeah. and, and this, I think, is something that really moves the needle and makes it a, a much more accessible product. It's going to be great. It's going to come out um, mid-2018. It's going to be less than 400 bucks, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's tons of VR content out there right now on YouTube, um, and there's tons of games, like the skiing game I was playing last night was a lot of fun. So again, this is the Lenovo uh, Mirage One featuring Google's Daydream OS. It's pretty and essentially, awesome. there's a computer inside of there thanks yeah. to this one chip, which is why you've brought a computer down here as well to show us some of the power of this chip. Here we go. And so the other thing, so recently, Microsoft has uh, rewritten parts of their OS so that it can now run on the Snapdragon processor. So this has never happened before. So all the computers out there have other processors that they run pretty hot, so they require fans. They require big batteries. Um, the, everything that you get in your mobile smartphone, this thin form factor, all day battery life, runs cool. They're now gonna bring that to PCs. So our partners, so Lenovo, again, they built this computer, um, the, the Mix 630, and it's very lightweight, it's very thin, it's completely fanless, and ready for this? What, what do you guys think is like good battery life in a, in a laptop? Eight hours is fantastic if I think, you get that. I, I think eight hours is fantastic. I think you'd make a very fantastic device if you can get eight hours. How about 20 hours? You're going to be able to get 20 hours of that straight video playback. So if you were to just play a video, which we're actually doing in our booth, um, in our Qualcomm booth, we have a time lapse set up, and we're just playing video, and we're, we're going uh, about 20 hours of video playback. But 
Um, according I find to that Mike, crazy. I, I legitimately have a nice Dell, and I, it's a brand new system, and I'm getting about eight hours of battery life, and I'm excited by the fact that I have that. And you're telling me 20 hours because of this new chip. I, you know what's crazy about that? I mean, the eight hours that you're getting, you're not just straight playing back video. You're actually doing some work, you're opening it, you're closing. According to Microsoft's testing, they found that the way the, the uh, person usually uses a laptop, they come home from work, they'll use their laptop for two hours, they'll close it, pop it open, they'll get a week's worth of battery life from this thing. Oof. So uh, this is the uh, Lenovo, the Mix 630, and it comes with you know, this uh, keyboard, so it turns into a laptop here or detaches into a tablet, has a touch screen, high resolution, 1080p, um, awesome keyboard, uses Windows Hello, so you can unlock with your face. Um, it's got everything, and then it has the awesome battery life from uh, Snapdragon, awesome performance, and this thing is lightweight. It's, it's mobile. The, it's awesome. the only reason that I'm going to inject a note of skepticism in here, Hit me. and yeah. forgive me for doing so. No, but. do it, do it. There was a thing called the ARM processor. There still is a thing called the ARM processor. And there was this whole phase that Microsoft went through where they wrote Windows for ARM. Yes. And then they, it, it wasn't particularly good. And they kind of pushed it underneath the rug and forgot about it. Right, right. And you guys are, it's kind of a similar concept here of a new chip. So this is why, this is why it's different. So what that was like a special version of Windows that they kind of, this is Windows 10. This is Windows 10. There's. There's, uh, it runs all of the apps that are out there right now, and uh, you know what, Jeremy? We're getting one of these in your hands very soon. I love it. So, so we're going to see, Digital Trends writes the best reviews, so we're going to see some honest, awesome reviews from you guys, and I cannot wait for you guys to see the battery life and the performance, and see that it's actual Windows 10 running on this little guy here. Flattery, you see what he's doing that here. That was so smooth. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to say, though, like, this is obviously really lifting the game here when it comes to technology, especially with mobile processors. Have you noticed that a lot of um, other companies are coming to you to team up and coming to Qualcomm to be like, how, how do we work together? Together. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so Lenovo's aren't the aren't the only guys. Um, ASUS is launching a laptop as well as HP. So they're going to be. Um, we like to say they're in the first wave. So I, uh, I think you can expect to see um, a lot of more Microsoft and Snapdragon devices in the future. Well, comes then just competing with itself then on the market. Hey, we and Snapdragon. We love all our children. <laughs> okay, you know, my mom would look me in the eyes. I know she probably likes my brother and sister better. But we love, she says we love all our children, you know, right. so. Applying it here. There's another uh, device on the table though. Talk us through this one. Oh my God, this one. Listen, I love, I love all my children. I love all you guys. <laughs> but I'm sorry, this is my favorite thing here. I would I'm usually say they can't hear you, but they can hear you. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. <sighs> well, oh, actually, you know what I should point out? I'm wearing one too. We're also, uh, this uh, smartwatch is featuring. This is uh, from Guess. It's featuring uh, Snapdragon as well. So that's how we get the all day battery life and the great performance out of your smartwatch. Um, there we go. But this guy, these are the Cubans. This is the one right here. <laughs> Tell us about it. All right, so here's what this is. This device right here is, it looks tiny, it looks small, but it creates amazing DSLR quality photos. So the, the way that this guy works, when you have a big honking, big DSLR, it produces an awesome image, but no one wants to carry it around because it's got a big lens attached to it. It's because of the big image sensor inside of it that creates a big, beautiful image. I work a lot on red carpets, and these poor photographers are just bending over, complaining about their back pain. So yeah, I know that. I, we're trying to solve back problems here with hey. this. So what this, what this guy is, um, the way to, the way to uh, get amazing, awesome image quality from a big image sensor is to break it into pieces. So if you break it into pieces, you get smaller image sensors and smaller lenses that you can fit in a compact design. So this features, this is called the Light L16. It features 16 cameras, and because it has Snapdragon, in real time, you snap a photo from all 16 of these little cameras, and it merges it together into one DSLR quality photo. This thing fits in your pocket. Unbelievable, right? And that's, that's not all. Because it's doing, we like to call this computational for, uh, photography, because you're using the computer power from this to merge this to all together. To stitch all those pictures together, sure. Exactly. So you can actually do a couple of different things. You get true optical zoom. There's different lenses on here. Some of them are 28 millimeters, some are at 70 millimeters, some are at 150. That collective gives you 5x optical zoom. But what you're also capturing is a depth map because these are, all have stereo vision effectively. And once you have the depth map, you can enhance the blur like a nice DSLR photo. So it knows what's in the foreground, it knows what's in the background, and it can really blur out that, uh, that image behind you to make that desirable image. The other thing you can do is, once you have the, the depth information, you can refocus the image. 
afterwards. So let's say you just missed the eyes a little bit. Now you can go in there and tune it up afterwards, after you take the photo with one of these. The size of that is like an old school Game Boy. So the fact that you, <laughs> you, know, you can carry it around, it's like the same shape and everything. Oh, it's, 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 I mean, this is, I mean, and frankly, this is, um, this is the blueprint for the future of photography. Um, you're already starting to see it with smartphones. You know, now we have two cameras on a smartphone. I mean, well, just two working together, but there's also maybe a front camera, there's ambient line sensors, there's actually tons of cameras on your smartphone. But the idea is to get more and more smaller cameras on here so you can get closer to DSLR photos and do things that DSLRs never could before, like refocus uh, and post and actually enhance the blur behind you. And to do that, of course, you need the power of, of a very powerful chip that's going to make yeah. this happen. Exactly. And which, so is, which is interesting, if I can jump in here. Go for um, it. I, I feel like a lot of consumers looking at products are thinking about capabilities and not necessarily about the processing power that goes into them, which is a message that I perhaps Qualcomm needs to share with the world. Look for the, the powerful chip that can make this kind of stuff happen. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what, and that's why, hey, that's where we're here with you guys digital trends. Um, yeah, there's, there's such a huge mix of technologies in here, and that's really, I shouldn't even say this because, you know, I shouldn't tell the competitors this, but that's how we get the awesome battery life, because it's not just a CPU, it's not just a GPU, it's not just a DSP, it's not just an ISP. We have all of these things, and the idea is if you can spread all of that processing out to the right type of architecture, then you can get the best battery life for that exact process. So VR is going to use different parts of the chip. Cameras are going to try different parts of the chip. Um, the, the modem that connects to the internet will use different parts of the chip. And that's how we get that awesome performance, but at that awesome low power and low thermal, so it's nice and cool. I get no nervous fans. with you holding the chip being very, very uh, animated <laughs> because if you throw and lose that, you'll never find it again. It's so small. We got a lot more of these. Okay, good. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the company tiny. will probably charge me for that. I probably will lose my job, but you know, I, apparently they have a lot more of these. Um, yeah. I do have a question here in the chat. Uh, Dan Baker is just wanting to know about the camera here. Yeah. With this kind of camera having all of those different lenses in there, um, Oh, I've lost the question. He's asking more and more. Oh, does it work uh, in something other than an ideal lighting situation? And does the depth of feel have a uh, field have a clean roll off similar to, or is it similar to portrait mode on the iPhone? Yeah, uh, yeah great. Thanks, Dan. Gr great question. Um, actually, so he wants to know if the first part of the question was, does it work well in non ideal lighting conditions? Low Thank light you. situations. Low light situations, exactly. That's what we call them. Yeah, that's why this exists. That's why people love DSLRs because it is able to collect so much light because it has that big image sensor with photodiodes that's able to pull in all that light. Collectively, between all these little sensors, you have all of those photodiodes pulling in all that light through these uh, and through these lenses with large apertures. So yes, this is going to perform awesome in low light. And uh, uh, the blur effect, as you're calling this computational, I mean, the more depth information you can capture, the more accurate you'll know uh, your depth information will be. So you'll understand if you're, what's in the background, what's in the foreground. We like to call that high resolution, high accurate depth maps. And so it'll be even more accurate with a device like this, so it'll feel even realer and there look even better. Dan, there's your answer big time. Thank you for asking the questions, though. Yeah, thanks yeah, for that. Totally, totally. So hold on, where else can we find out more about Snapdragon and what Qualcomm's up to if people can't get to see yes? No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so everyone can go to Qualcomm.com. You can check out our Twitter feed, which is at uh, Qualcomm. Or, you know what, we got this other new thing. I hear it's, I hear it's amazing. It's the Qualcomm podcast. It's available in the Apple podcast uh, store. It's available on Google uh, Music Store. Um, I hear it's amazing because you on that? I am the host. There it is. There it is. I mean, how I don't did know I sense how, that? I, yeah, I, they had the Oscars. I don't know how I wasn't given <laughs> an award. It, it's absurd, but yeah, check out the podcast. It's awesome. And check out Qualcomm and check out the stuff from our partners and uh, check out Digital Trends because they're going to review all this stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> and I can't wait to see uh, what you guys say. PJ, thank you so much for joining us here at Digital Trends and taking time out from CES. But we are not done yet. There is still more tech talk coming your way.